At the end, Picard and Kirk beam down to the planet and are set on destroying the central node. They eventually find that the node has a deus ex lever, meaning that if it's pulled, it will destroy the entire planet, apparently. Both Picard and Kirk argue as to who is going to pull it, and Kirk, being Kirk, punches Picard in the face to knock him out. Afterwards, he pulls the deus ex lever and the node is destroyed. And that was The Return, a book that really should have been a film. It would have been the greatest Trek film of all time. But, oh well. To say the least, everything was more or less exemplary in the book. So let's take a look at the list by looking at the various logical issues. The first logical issue is one that is not too bad here, but was seen throughout the TNG films. The concept that Picard should be an action hero. Picard is the captain of the Enterprise, meaning that he should be commanding the ship, not fighting on the ground. In this book, in the book, this is made pretty clear when, in the mission to investigate the assimilated Starfleet colony, Picard jumps out of the shuttle and uses anti-grav to land, he falls flat on his ass, whereas the younger and more experienced strike team do not. The Borg hypercube is another thing that makes no sense. If the Borg had this kind of technology, the ability to build a space station in interdimensional space, shouldn't that mean that they have the technology to assimilate the entire galaxy? Because really, when you've got this kind of tech, having phasers and shields doesn't really cut it. Since this book is supposedly written by William Shatner, some of the descriptions are a bit off. For example, the phasers are described as being blue when they are really gold. Also, the ships are described as being duranium white when in fact they should be gray. This of course stems from the belief that the first Enterprise was painted white. Even I made that mistake with one of my models. And finally, the dumbest thing yet. The Borg-Romulan Alliance. The Romulans did almost nothing. The Borg supplied the tech to bring Kirk back to life. They basically supplied every piece of technology that the Romulans used against the Federation. So what's the point of the Romulans? Well, it's explained that they need the Romulan Star Empire on the collective side so they can use it as an invasion corridor. Really? Why not just assimilate the Romulans? In fact, the Borg even say that after they take out the Federation, they're coming out of the Romulan Star Empire next. So why use them at all? The Romulans supplied almost nothing that the Collective couldn't have. So really, what's the point? I guess it just combines two of the Federation's current enemies. I don't know. Anyway. Let's take a look at the characters. Kirk's character is really represented quite well. He is the Kirk we all know and love. All of his mannerisms seen in the original series and the original films are there. And he really does play off of Picard really quite well. And we get a lot of good scenes of them working together. Really, this would have been great to see in a film. Why they chose to have Kirk and Picard do almost nothing together in Generations is just beyond me. Since this book takes place right after Generations, we get a few humorous scenes with Data still trying to adjust to his emotion chip. We get to see him swear a bit and generally act like an idiot. Now, The Return was actually the second book in the so-called Shatnerverse. This is a series of books so non-canon as to actually get their own continuity. The books that took place after this one were pretty bad. The situations became boring and Kirk's character was just ruined beyond all belief, to the point where the Kirk scene in Trek 11 was more faithful. Seriously, at one point, Kirk said that he hoped the Federation would fall. And some of the later books mention that in the Mirror Universe, that the evil Kirk actually turned into an energy being. I am not kidding. That actually was supposed to have happened. I do recommend picking up this book, even if you're just a casual Trek fan, because all this book builds upon is continuity from the TV show and that terrible, terrible film, Generations. Really, this feels like an actual Trek adventure that you would have actually seen on either the TV show or a movie! So, this is General Lotz, wishing you good, watching the clock, good, catty, and blood, 
or whatever makes you happy.